Well, if you were gonna pick a day ticket venue to try and break a PB, I'm sure the linear complex, Bray's Nose One, would be at the top of many people's list. It is for me, and as you can see, with this 30 pounder here held in my hands, this video goes pretty well. Someday we'll make it on <laughs> Other days we only can try. Either way, no matter what people say. Either way. Welcome to the giveaway. In this series, Team AD fish to win you Angling Direct gift vouchers. In every single episode, one lucky subscriber will win at least £100. The concept is simple, a challenge will be set. If we fail, you win the £100, but if we pass, we will double the vouchers to £200. So, what do you need to do? Firstly, sit back and enjoy the video. Secondly, you must be subscribed to our ADTV YouTube channel and then comment the giveaway in the comment section below. We're going to randomly select a subscriber from the comments below and then we'll announce that winner in the next episode of the giveaway. The rest is up to us. Can we double your money? Let's see. So it is time for another giveaway and in this challenge it falls on myself and myself only with a very simple concept. I need to try and break my UK PB carp. Now in my fishing I do all different aspects of it, probably getting the carp rods out is the least. So the target to beat is a respectable but definitely beatable 34 pounds and 6 ounces. Now if you are going to try and beat PB the first rule is go somewhere that gives you a chance. And that is why we are sat on the linear complex and on Bray's nose one. It probably needs absolutely no introduction, numerous big fish, and I don't know the exact figures, but I'd go as far as saying there's probably two or 300 fish in here that are probably over that. So I've got a very good chance if we can get amongst a few fish. Now, the weather is absolutely roasting. That's why I'm sitting here in my bivvy and we've turned up about midday to probably not ideal fishing conditions. So Linea is very synonymous with three rods on a spot, loads of bait, big hits, but I haven't gone down that approach to start with. I've tied up three solid bags, wrapped them at three different distances, and we're just gonna try and explore a bit of water and see if we can find the fish that way. We're not then committed to this area. If we need to move, we can do so, but I'm pretty happy that in this main sort of bowl in front of me is a very good area to hold fish. So slightly softly, softly approach, that is what we're going in with, and those rods are fishing. So while they're doing that, I guess it's a good time for me to announce the winner of the last episode where Chris and Phil managed to complete a barbel challenge. So 200 pounds is going to the name tagged just here. All you need to do is email address, email us, sorry, at the email address at the bottom of the screen and we will get those 200 pounds sent out to you. So let's hope we can kick this off to a very quick start. It would be nice to get on the scoreboard early. We are moving fast, ignore me, but we've just seen a fish top about three or four rod lengths out. So I am quickly, as quick as I can, whipping bag together, I'm going to get it straight on top of its head. Tuna! Stinky tuna! Turn on, mate, that helps. Deal with it. Deal with it. relatively slow at the moment, as expected this way. So I'm just cramming up some more. I'm just gonna make a little mix together and think about getting some bait out there. Not seeing a lot feed, to be honest with you all show, apart from Chris. He's nearly eating all his food that he brought for two days in the afternoon. So he's had a good feed up. But as far as the fish go, and certainly here at Linear, I don't really think there's a special mix if I'm honest. I just literally use whatever I've got in the garage. I just got a few bags left over, some corn, always good. But you've got to remember they're big hungry fish and when they come on top of you, you just need a fair bit of quantity of bait to hold them sometimes. So I'm not too fussy with it. Some obviously good old fashioned boilies. These have got the sugars come out of them. Some people think that 
they're gone at that point, but they're absolutely fine. Some hemp, some pellets, keep it simple. I'm gonna get that mixed up, probably in about half an hour or so. I'm gonna get out there, find a spot, and perhaps um, see if we can encourage a few to go down and have a little feed on whatever we've got out there for them. Do you want to? Mm -hmm. They'll catch him, they'll catch him. Yum, yum, yum. Right, that's the spot planned. Let's get this change over to a spawn and get some bait out there. She's saying them boy. Just getting some lead clips ready. I'm gonna get them out there. The bait's out there. Wind in our face, so not easy, but I don't know, you're the carp man, what are you saying? Well, as long as you get those out there, hit the clip at 27. There's every chance, isn't there? There's every chance. There's plenty of fish and they're hungry, like I said. But I've you know I've been here before and you think, oh you're gonna club them, it's easy, there's thousands of carp. Like, yeah, there is thousands of carp in B1, but if they ain't on you, you don't catch them. So um, don't get depressed if you go through periods with um, not catching, but keep working at it. And normally you can find them. So that's what I'm hoping for anyway. That's one rod done. I'm gonna go get the other one and get that ready. Nice. That's nice and neat, mate. Did you uh, take that out of a packet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually quite impressed mate, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's getting there, it's isn't getting it? getting there. Plop. That's the one. Come on. It's beautiful mate. I like it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. Serious years of uh, blanking perfection here. Mm. I'm an, I've got it down to a T, just <laughs> staring out of the lake, looking for any signs of carp while drinking tea and eating biscuits. And I'm an absolute natural at this. Watch. Wow. You wonder why you need one pack for 24 hours. My mum I don't speak with biscuits in my mouth. <laughs> don't speak with <laughs> Oh dear, and on that note... <laughs> on being carp anglers drinking the tea and blanking <laughs> <laughs> oh so frustrating this late i mean it seems easy there's a lot of fish in it i've done sessions here and you've had like 40 fish in two days i've done blank sessions here it's how it goes but um i think the new plan is it's meant to be hot again today 
I either fancy go on zigs maybe, but that does tend to catch the smaller fish. Can be quite effective in here, but very rarely have I ever caught some of the bigger fish that we're going to need to pass this challenge. And I think Chris, you fancy going maybe going to have a little walk around with some floaters if it gets a bit hotter, which is meant to, and the wind calms down. There might be an opportunity there. So we're still contemplating the next move. I don't think you have to rush quite no, so yet. No, we're definitely not giving up at all. We're going to give these another couple of hours. They're all nicely refreshed. We've seen one or two fish here and there, nothing to like really go on. So at the moment, we just keep doing what we know works from the past and um, keep drinking the teas. Sounds good. decided to stay put because we've seen two fish long to where we were fishing so we decided that zigs is probably going to be the best way hopefully they're willing to get involved up in the water in a little bit of a sloppy spot mix i'm going to mix that up now so they're both out there on the same spot as we we're fishing overnight but fishing at six foot and nine foot so all i need to do now is every 15 minutes freeze bombs rain over a nice cloud of all sorts of goodies and hopefully that is going to be the way that we catch them this afternoon I'm recording just in case. Uh, yes. Really? Nice. Wow, what a weird <laughs> boy. <laughs> well, you're fishing zigs, aren't you? Oh, I was like, is it on, isn't it on? I mean, definitely something on. Do you know what I was then doing? I don't want to know. I was literally then tying a rig. Right. Um, longer, because this is on a... Is that the short one? It's or? on a five, five and a half footer. We both thought, oh, we need to be higher, spotting over zigs. So I was then tying up. You sit on my bench in a minute, I'm not lying, a 10 footer. Nice, so, well, well, scrap that. Glad you we can didn't push, do you that. Can, you can push that, mate, because can, you've got a fish on. They can both now go on five foot. I'm going to get your waders for you. Please. Nice that you left them so they're easy to get on, would you? That is such a widget. Good luck with that. What's happening here? That's how you left them, is what's happening there. Really shallow in front, that's why. Oh, I got it on the wrong foot. <laughs> I'm bushing it. I would. I'm just going to concentrate. Yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> That's the problem with zigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Right, he's fine there two minutes. Big shoulder fish in here. Let's get it right back out. There we go, that's what we called it on. Just a self-tied little zig. Little yellow trim down pop up and I'm just squeezing on some pink almond goo just to make it really, really bright. The other one we've got a zig aligner bit of foam on it I'm happy that either of them are just as capable of catching fish so looks like they got in amongst that spod mix let's hope there's another one out there that started off white you said yellow ah. did I yeah but oh. anyway people can see it's white <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> yes I'll blame me. Phil Spinks he's colorblind he's taught me that yeah, yeah it started off white I changed it to pink that's what I meant <laughs>
go. 25. And there we go, 25 pounds. I've raised nose one carp and to think that this is probably an average size fish, maybe slightly above, but certainly a nice one. And one thing I'm not gonna do is keep out too long. It's absolutely baking. And for the second reason, we'll need to get some more spawns out. So quick look, we knew it wasn't gonna trouble the PB, but a wicked fish, one quick picture and they get back. That way, buddy. It's such a cool method, like when it works, it works. It's great to have someone here with you because a lot of the time the spawn hits, you get halfway in and that's when you can get your bites. That's why you just gotta keep going. Like as much as it can be demoralized and it doesn't always work here, but when it does, electric. No. Chicken's getting burned. I've turned it off. Oh. <laughs> I'm on it, mate. I'm glad. I literally, I just, I, I thought, no, my chicken's burned. I turned it off on the run out. Yep, go, go, go. 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 Go, go, of they are just relentless and that is the importance of getting a rig back out a couple of spawns because you've got to hold them there there's always people putting out bait and it will take them minutes to move on and find someone else so sort of sometimes your sessions can go on how well you can hold them when they come on top of you you know i've how long have we been fishing for now probably 28 hours yeah. over 24 hours without a bite and then three bites in an hour. Less than an hour. Yeah, that's what it's like. And you've got to be prepared for it. And you've got to be ready for it. But yeah. common in there. Just about to weigh that, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, we didn't even get a reading on that. I'm going to guess it's 24 ish. Yeah. And another one on here, all on exactly the same rod. And a fish just chopped down there. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, and you've got a rod down there. And I've got a rod down there. So it could really kick off. Hopefully. Well, we hope it does anyway. Hopefully. This could be PB, mate. <laughs> does it feel like a PB? Mm, it's hard to tell. You're such a long range. But there's every chance in here. If you caught... Ten fish. Ten fish, there's every chance one could be a 30 or even mid-30. Oh, I think you've like, caught ten fish. There'd be more chance of one 30. Yeah, you know. So this is number three on. We're ticking them off. There's some real big fish in here. And that's why everyone you play, it's that heart going a little bit. You let it tell on. Yeah. Could be interesting. Zig 
But there we have it, fish number two, after the rudely interrupted by that bite, but I will take that any day of the week. Slipped on the scales, 24 pounds and 15 ounces, just an ounce difference between the first fish and still one more to look at. So the switch to zigs was definitely worthwhile. Can we hold them here? Let's hope so, because it's been a good little hour so far. And that is fish number three. Similar in size, we haven't weighed it, but it's definitely not the PB breaker. So this one's going back. I'm gonna get back on the spot rod. What oh, have you done? Sorry. <laughs> You've lost the fish I've before the return. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no relief. Oh. Oh. That's all right, isn't it? That's bigger. What's your other lines, Brian? That's bigger. I'm going in. Go on, son. Yes, now. <sighs> and? Getting a bigger, a little bit bigger, I think. Yeah, definitely bigger. Right, just get that line sunk. We're gonna get this on the rest. And then we've got that fish to look at. Is it gonna go 30? I'm not sure, but I think it's close. What are we saying, Chris? It's hard to tell, but I'm saying... I think this is close to 30. I think I'll it's just you, over you 30. You read, I'll lift. Okay. I don't know if I can lift one thing. I might have to get the bar, but let's try it. I reckon it's just over. I can't quite see. Hang on. 30 pound and 15 ounces. It's a 30 Yay. pounder! Well done, buddy. <laughs> it's not a PB, <laughs> but you cannot grumble at a 30 pounder. Let's have a look at it. about that a b1 30 pounder in the hands it feels good lovely job oh it does creep us ever closer to that pb but to be honest with you i really don't mind that i would love to win you guys and girls <laughs> yeah. an extra 100 pounds <laughs> you gotta but, say that you gotta get them yeah well. i've gotta try and i will continue to try i'm getting very tired now <laughs> the spotting is relentless i've managed to convince chris he's going to do a bit of spotting for me so i can have a little bit of a break because i need to eat something and drink something in all seriousness as much as we joke that's a serious point when it's like this keep hydrated keep some food going in because it's pretty hard work <laughs> oh, do some spawning for me. Okay. <laughs>
Yeah, a little bit of a break. Enough time to eat some wraps. Boats are so weird on digs, aren't they? Oh, I think I picked the other one up. That's you it. have. It's got to be in it. Yeah. You were only saying, like, last fish. You've done really well not to hook your other rods. I know. Have a look down there. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on down here? I'll hook the other oh. rod. <laughs> right, this could be interesting. <laughs> so the rods have been refreshed and this was the culprit of that last bike 28 and a half pounds real short fat one a little bit of a character we're gonna say a little bit like yourself <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like myself but yeah chris has basically said that he's run out of food and he's getting hangry he's getting awkward to film with now so he's gonna go <laughs> and get some food I'm gonna put this back, hit the repeat button on that spawn. I'm gonna feed the carp while he goes and sorts his, his own food out. And then hopefully, I'll catch him when he's gone, or if not, when he gets back. I would say we've probably got about another hour's worth of light where the zig fishing is good. And then we will perhaps have to switch back onto the bottom. So time is ticking now. Let's see if we can creep up on the weight any more than that 30 we had a few hours ago. So after we returned that fish, Chris had to shoot off to get some food, which left me on the spawn rod. Worked at it really hard, but nothing more materialized. The light was fading, and in my experience at linear fisheries, that does mean the zigs become a little less effective. So what I decided to do was reel in and get ready for the evening. Now I mentioned at the start of the video, I think the bigger fish, although we've had some nice ones already, are definitely food eaters, boil eaters, they feed on the bottom and that's hopefully where we're going to break this PB. So I've got two rods done already, I've got the rod down the margin, the same spot as we had yesterday, nice and short, I've tested a little pop-up rig in the margins, that's gone out, we have about half a kilo of boilies scattered over it and that one's just going to be left pretty much now until the morning unless anything happens. One of the long rods is also done. Now I didn't feel a need to bait that up because in my sloppy spot mix I'm baiting over zigs. What I do is about two hours before I think I'm gonna to change to fishing on the bottom, I start to include some bigger particles, boilies, pellets, stuff that's gonna to get to the bottom, sweet corn. So while I'm fishing zigs, I'm also pre-preparing my spot for the evening. And that brings us on to the last rod, which is what I've got right here in my hands, which is a little Ronnie rig little yellow pop-up because some corn has gone into the mix and again that's just going to go on the long rod over the spot where <coughs> well voice is gone where we caught those fish so hopefully a big and drops down and we managed to catch them i'm going to leave it fairly quiet apart from that and see what happens so hopefully we'll have something to report from before it gets dark or in the hours of darkness and at the very worst maybe even in the morning Right then, good morning. Unfortunately, very, very similar to night one. Nothing to report. We just can't seem to get those fish to go down and feed, whether they're here and just not feeding, or if they're just not here and that's why we're not catching them. But they were definitely here yesterday. So we've got a dilemma. We've only got about two to three hours of fishing time left before we have to go. And I don't feel, we've been chatting with Chris, that we're gonna catch like this. We haven't got anything on the bottom either night, so, we're gonna go back on the zigs. The only thing is, from my personal experience here at Linear, it takes a couple of hours to get it going and it's also way better when it's really hot and they're really high in the upper layers. So either way, I think we're taking a risk, but we've caught on zigs, so we're going back to that. I'd love to catch one more, give myself a chance to win you that 200 pounds. Yesterday, this is what we caught on. Apart from one, they were all on zig aligners with foam, 
really high. We're talking 12, 11 foot high. So we're gonna get repeat that all three rods long, get on the spot rod, and we've got two hours to make something happen. I think that gives us a better chance than just sitting here behind motionless rods on the bottom, but we will see. That is it. Unfortunately, it has not happened this morning despite our best efforts. I think if we were to carry on today, we would have another mental afternoon like we had yesterday. We worked out, the fish moved in, and yeah, it was just a case of this temperature and the sun rising. I think it would have been good again, but wasn't to be. I'm still not disappointed. How can you be disappointed when you've had five fish ranging from 24 to pretty much 31? You can't complain at that, can you? This venue can be crazily good at some times, like we experienced yesterday afternoon, but can also be tricky if the fish aren't on you as well. So we will take it, but it does mean as far as the giveaway has gone, I have unfortunately failed. But still means there's 100 pounds up for grabs, and you know how to win that. All you need to do is comment in the comment section below the giveaway, and you must be, or if not, subscribe to ADTV before you comment as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. It's been good fun for us. We've had a laugh along the way. We are making the four hour drive home pretty happy, but not quite as happy as we could have been if we passed. <laughs>